Bevan, where were you at the underpants run yesterday? I've been on the road for well over six weeks now and I've literally run out of underpants. So <laughs> there was It would no, have been the naked Bevan run. It would have been the naked Bevan <laughs> run and that would have had me banned from the island. Yeah, well thank you for not coming, Ken. My, my yeah, pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. But, but it's race day. Race day today. And we have a bunch of people on the show today who may make a mark on the race. They could actually be making a mark on the race as we speak. It is episode five of the Fitter and Feisty Kona Daily News Show, powered by Wahoo. I am Sarah Gross from Live Feisty Media. And I am Bevan McKinnon from Fitter Radio Podcast. And Bevan, our contest is currently running. It right? is running. It is running, and people have entered, folks. The competition is high. A lot of people have entered. Yes. It, it, because it's such a good prize to give away. It, yeah, it is a great prize. It's yeah. a power meter from 4i, dual-sided. Um, and it's worth about a thousand US dollars. And to enter what you need to do is tag three friends in the comments below um, who you think might be interested in the show and tell them how amazing Bevan and I are. Ha, of course. <laughs> and, and every three tags is worth one entry to win the power meter. Yeah, so go for gold. Go for gold. So first, of all, first off, you talk to Patrick Nielsen who is flying under the radar a little bit in this race, but he had a great performance at Ironman Texas. Absolutely, and, and you know, um, we were in Texas training uh, with Jocelyn and uh, both Patricks, uh, Patrick Lang, uh, Patrick Nielsen were there at the time, and you know, I spoke to him even before this interview about his performance at Ironman Texas, where for large periods of the bike ride, he matched Andrew Starkowitz. Uh, but he mm. still got off and ran a, a very low 240s run. You know, in the beginning of his career, his first, you can correct me if I'm wrong, his first two Ironmans, I think, were under eight hours. Really? Yeah, yeah. So he's Fun a... Fun facts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's my job. <laughs> so he's a really, really uh, talented athlete, and there's no reason why he can't get on the podium. Um, so we caught up with him at the BMC team media day. Well, you got off and ran well, and you're a guy that's quite consistently run in the low 240s. It was a hot day in Texas. Mm. What do you do to prepare for that kind of run here in Kona, and do you think you're capable of producing the same run time? I think what's different here is the hills. Um, it's not maybe a hilly course, yeah. but it's rolling all the time. You also have Palana, where I believe you lose a minute quick just on that hill. Yeah. Um, where Ironman Texas was maybe trickier, like a lot of technical yeah, turns. Yeah, technical turns. I, I mean, there's only one guy or a handful of guys who's running the 240C. Um, I don't think I will do it. It might be possible, but I will be really satisfied with a 245 run. For sure. Well, with your bike leg uh, making that swim pack and running a 245, that's going to get you very close to the podium. I, do. I wouldn't count. Actually, I think try rating is... It, 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 it's just numbers. It's, it's good in some ways. It's bad in some ways. But I would say you have one, two, three favorites for the podium. Um, then I would say there's, there's a handful of guys who could take the second or third place or the win. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm one of them, but it will require something extra to, to be on the podium for sure. Now Patrick actually mentioned, you know, uh, that Kona is a different course than Texas. In Texas it suited Andrew Starkowitz down to the ground on the bike ride. A lot of flat, long, straights, not much change in the course, but Kona's, a, you know, it, no one ever thinks Kona's a hilly course, um, but it actually is, uh, both on the bike and run. Um, and in Patrick's case, he sort of shadowed Starkey for a long part of Texas, uh, as did Jocelyn McCauley mm -hmm. um, with Daniela Reef. 
Yeah, so Jocelyn, super feisty. One Very of, feisty. One of my personal favorite athletes, and you coach her. I'll have to say one of my personal right. favorites so as well. So we have some sentimental favoritism going on here with Jocelyn. Yeah. But um, honestly, Jocelyn is one of those people who, who has stood up and said, you know, I'm going to try to win the race, yeah. and this is how I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I wanted to, I, I talked to her earlier in the week about really exactly how she plans to do that. Jocelyn McCauley, you are my pick for the feistiest pro. What say you? I would never have guessed. <laughs> so my question for you, feisty, is what is your plan to win the race on Saturday? Um, it's going to be repeat of Ironman Texas, but and a little different. <laughs> yes. So go out there, um, swim with that front pack. Uh, I think that's necessary for... Who, anyone who's going to be in that top five, to be honest, is going to be out of that front pack. Uh, not Lucy or Lauren, but main pack or whatever. And so then come through transition, have a good transition, and get out there on that bike. And I think that it's going to be, this is you know all theoretical in my predictions, but I think it's going to be a pack of women, kind of like 70.3 was, um, that will probably start splintering at Kauai High, which is the turn off to Javi, basically. And then going up to Javi, I think it will splinter even more. Um, I think Crowley will go with Reef. I, I will go with Reef. Um, and then it will, uh, Imogen, I actually think, mm. maybe up there as well with us. Um, and then coming down from Javi, I think it's going to splinter even more um, with me and Reef, and maybe other people can hold on. We'll see. Um, and then coming back in, um, catching Lucy Charles, I think she will actually jump on the ship and then come into T2, and I think it's going to be a running race that will be really exciting. I think it's going to be a lot of, like, shoulder to shoulder or, you know, pocket in pocket, basically, running race um, there. And um, I plan to just hang with whoever that lead person is uh, until Kalani. I am a good downhill runner, so run, sprint down Kalani, and go home. I love how specific that was. Like, when we're watching the race on Saturday, I'm going to be thinking of you as it plays out. <laughs> Jocelyn has a super clear vision about what she sees unfolding on race day, which, which is amazing. And it's, I love that she shared it with us. And I understand you were on her training camp with her in Texas. Yep. And a lot of our sessions were geared towards uh, building the capabilities, both fitness-wise and the scenarios that would allow her to make the sessions feel like what she visualizes the race actually unfolding. And, you know, I was there with another of our training partners, um, Hannah Wells, a professional athlete from New Zealand, and we set those scenarios up so I was on the ground the entire time. Really? So how did that, how did that training go for you? Were you able to train with them pretty well? Yeah, it was easy. I've easy? Been, yeah, I've been there before. You were just right there on the bike, All the holding time. the wheel, no problem? Yeah, um, I, I probably could have done more. Um, it makes me wonder why I don't sort of uh, bring my career back in some way. Okay, so Jocelyn, your coach is Bevan McKinnon, who is my co-host on the Fitter and Feisty Kona Daily News show, and he was dishing a little bit of dirt on you um, with us earlier. I'm surprised he didn't dirt, dish more dirt on me, oh, to be honest. It's, the, the week is still young. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so my question for you is, can you give us a little dirt on him? Yeah, so we've been training together the last couple of weeks, and I'm, um, well two things so chris his partner said um she said that uh, he has been training to be able to train for with me for this race that's good. um that's good which she's been dropped so which is kind of sad <laughs> if he's been training to get dropped but we were in ironman texas i mean ironman texas we were in texas and um out on a bike ride and it was a long ride it was going to be 130 miles and we are literally 25 minutes into this ride. Mm -hmm. And he says, we're pulling over to that gas station to get some ice. 25 minutes, you guys. We lasted oh, 25 minutes. Did Bevan get hot? <laughs> no, he wanted crushed ice. <laughs> of course. For his drinks, his water bottle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did eye the liter of beer that was in there as well. He didn't get it. But, but he did get... Um, some not so much LCHF, which is he's pr proponent of, right. um, treats along along the way. Oh, but, I see. Excellent. Yeah. That is good insider information because I'm going to bring candy to the set and feed it to him. Well, you need to put them for like 80 miles first okay. before you do that. 
because the first time he came out to Ironman, uh, to Boise with me to train for Ironman Texas, um, we were about 80 miles into a ride. We stop at a gas station. He's majorly bonking and he buys two muffins, two Snickers, and like he just bought like all the treats that he could find. So it was great. Bevan, any chance you want to change your story on how that training camp went down in Texas? There might have been one or two days where um, I was feeling the pinch a little bit. You and, needed a frog. And I needed a frog. And, uh, you know, I, t I sat out a couple of sessions. Um, I'll be honest now. Okay, um, okay. Maybe I was, you know, waxing lyrical a little bit about what you? I was... Yeah, 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 totally. I know it's surprising. I know it's surprising. One of those sessions that I did sit out was a swim squad that we went to um, in Texas and I managed to uh, catch up with Patrick Lang after the swim squad and we went out to lunch and we said look let's have a chat when we get to Kona uh, and I had a chat with Patrick a couple of days ago to find out how he's feeling leading into the race. I want to talk to you about the bike ride, your wife has just had a crash, uh, was that your fault? Nope, I wasn't around. <laughs> Not really, but, no, I think she she just hit a, a wind uh, um, and just here, yeah, 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 here on, on the your... highway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. But it, everything's good. So uh, it was hot crash, hot impact, broke the helmet. Um, lots of bruises, lots of uh, road rash, and uh, big cut. Wow. But she was lucky to went away without uh, any problem. So. Okay. Recovering. Yeah, she's got some road rash for sure. How are you feeling coming into the race? Good. So it's good to be back on the island. Um, and um, yeah, so far so good. Um, I'm, I'm quite relaxed. But um, yeah, I think I have done everything uh, I could. Yeah. I trained well, prepared well, and um, still like. Uh, Last two weeks in training camps, they have been they have been really good. Yeah. Uh, I could feel the, the, the ramping up, and uh, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. So you've been with Boris Stein, who's been giving yeah. you the uh, hammer in Texas the entire training camp. Do you think yeah. that helps? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it it always helps to have good training partners around you. I also good company with Will Clark, uh, who's a superb athlete, and um, so yeah, we were able to push ourselves. And um, that, that, that definitely helps. Okay. The bike is such an important part for you uh, in any race this, you know, here on the Big Island. Do you think the bike is going to be any different this year than other years? Uh, no, I don't think that the bike will be much different, but I think the swim will be different. So we have such uh, amazing fast swimmers and I think my manager has to be a little bit aware of his uh, swim record. Um, <laughs> oh. So yeah, um, I think we will see a race that will yeah go off the start line really really fast, and um, so I think that's actually affecting the bike leg the most than the bike dynamics itself. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I try to stay cool and uh, calm and do my do my race, and I think at the end it, it's gonna be good again. Okay. Jan's swim record could go down. 46 minutes, Alistair Brownlee swam at the front of the race, unwet suited. Uh, that group could be up the road, or how's the swim form at the moment? Um, yeah, I think to, to be realistic, when they uh, put the hammer down and to, to try everything to uh, to to get away, uh, I don't, uh, I, I won't be able to call the group. That's just uh, that's just not realistic. And, uh, but uh, if I if I execute a normal swim, I uh, I think the, the the gap will be 90 seconds to two minutes, and that's definitely uh, it's a it's a, it's a long day, and uh, I think um, I can run 10 to 15 minutes faster than, than some of these guys. And, uh, okay. So it's it's another 2:40 run then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm aiming for. Obviously, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's it's often said, Bevan, I'm sure you've heard this before, that this, the race can't be won in the swim, but yep. it can be lost in the swim. Yep. Um, but it seems to me that Patrick felt like the swim is kind of going to, could go to a new level this year with, um, with the entrance of Alistair Brownlee in the race. Um, it could actually, the race possibly could hinge on the swim. Yeah, and he's talking 90 seconds. Like he thinks he's probably going to lose about 90 seconds to those guys out of the water, but I think in, in past years where Hamburg has gone off the front, 
he hasn't taken the likes of the quality of Brownlee and maybe Fredino and those guys with him. If those guys commit to the first part of the bike, they may not be seen again, you know. And at the whole of swim, as I mentioned before, 46 minutes for the a non wetsuit swim that's really really quick yeah um, and at the whole swim I managed to catch up with Heather Jackson who also mentioned how she saw the day unfold do you think the front of the, the swims got faster um, well like faster than Lucy and Lauren standard or <laughs> <laughs> well I mean the, the, the group in behind oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> has it become bigger um, I feel like that pack that might not be here anymore, like Elizabeth Blatchford, yeah. Vesterby, yeah. Um, you have people that are back now, like Stefan, um, I think, um, and then you have a few of the newer girls that will be up there, yeah. um, so it might be a, little, a couple bigger, uh, it's probably about the same, that, that anywhere from whatever 52 to 52 board group, and I was hoping that there would be kind of that middle group, like a 55 to 6 group. Um, Sky, unfortunately. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. think about her every day. I mean, she, I had her top, for sure, top ten, if not top five. And someone who might have been there on the bike as well. Yep, exactly. So I did like a Carrie Lester. Maybe. So I, I was looking for maybe that five, six group um, people that will maybe be in the middle for that massive group that's 57, 58. So yeah, okay. it's always so like on the day what happens, right? Okay. You love the swim, though. Right? Uh, just love it. <laughs> <laughs> Get me to land and I'm good. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, a lot of American women on the start of this year. 12 American women. Yeah. That, is that the biggest thing you remember? It's got to be close to it. I think so. I think so. Like, yeah, for sure. And a lot of girls coming up through the ranks as well. Yeah, exactly. Some new faces that are crushing it this year. So it'll be interesting. Because I think there's more... Yeah, it's a, it's a new mixture of... Got the runners who are going to be coming, you have Brady, and you have Sarah True, yep. and then you have some new faces here, the bikers, like yeah. Yeah. Imogen. Imogen Simmons is going to be an interesting yeah. one, isn't she? Um, some other Uber bikers, Daniela. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 What about yourself? Are you looking forward to the next You've known as an Uber biker? <laughs> I see you've been putting in some pretty big run miles. Yeah. How's that going? Yeah. Uh, I definitely have focused on the run this year. Um, I've always, I mean, my bike goes up and down, but it stays pretty consistent. I can put in a good block and feel pretty extra strong, but I always know I kind of, that's where I draw my confidence from, and I wanted to bring up that run. So, um, yeah, I started working with Lauren Fleshman that's right. yeah. in June. So, the past, yeah, three and a half months, um, I got to train with her squad. Uh, actually, my main training partner, Carrie Mack, raced this morning yeah. Twin Cities Marathon. She went 236-34, so she was trying for that 237 uh, standard. Wow. So she got it. So she'll race Atlanta in uh, February. But, uh, yeah, just to learn from true runners and, and be pushed and get to chase them and just learn how they train. And, uh, yeah, you just put in the work with them. It's amazing, and it just gives you that confidence. I feel like I'm coming into the race with a plan and like pacing and what to do and you know um, versus I've always just kind of been this like it's, it's a race. I'm here to race and I go out and yeah, way too hard. I'm not pacing. I'm not racing and for me it was always this like badass way of like approaching it versus like no this is my plan. I'm running this pace for this. I hit 10 miles to go. It's time to float. Like I just feel I have a plan and it's, yeah, just up to me to execute all day. Bevan, I didn't realize that Heather had been training with Lauren Fleshman. I, I think that's really interesting and I'm really keen to see now how she runs today. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the same thing as well because the swimmer is getting faster and faster at the front and Heather's uh, MO for this race has always been to play catch up on the bike. Um, whether she can do it and get close enough to front to use that run that she's been working on but she'll spend large parts of the race on her own and I know that she's done a heck of a lot of work on her bike setup and her bike position this year and she's got lower down at the front because she may have to do a long period of uh, riding on her own and so aerodynamics are going to be crucial to her uh, performance on the day and possibly the overall outcome.
So we know how important aerodynamics are going to play a role in the outcome on the, the race today. Um, and we brought in Andrew from Four Eyes, who's an aerodynamics specialist. Now, you've been in the expo, and I'm sure you've looked around all the super bikes there. Uh, what are some of the trends that you're actually seeing in terms of parts and uh, aftermarket changes and front ends and so forth? Well, I'd say the name of the game is actually integration. So everything yeah. now is just built as one piece. It's not an afterthought. Yeah. So you see the hydration and nutrition that's uh, entirely built around the bike itself. Yeah. Uh, Specialized has their new shiv, uh, and then that's got the big bottle on the back. Yeah. Ventum has their integrated bottle. And you're seeing more and more solutions like that that allow you to drink aerodynamically instead of strapping bottles onto the side of your $10,000 bike. So Andrew, what do I want to ask you, which I think is one of the most debated uh, topics in terms of aerodynamics at the moment, is we're seeing the trend for the hands coming up or the hands down. Now there's two canyons in the expo with Jan Fredino and Patrick Lang, and there's slightly different front ends. So what is the trend and what's your opinion? So there's definitely more people going at a higher angle right now with their arms. So yep. the um, the main trend is just this level of integration, same with the water bottle. So we're getting the front ends built specifically around athletes. So 3D printed, 3D custom molded yep. bars. Uh, when you get the extensions that are built right around the arms of the athlete, you end up with something that's very smooth for the airflow. It allows mm -hmm. it to pass off the arms nice and clean and then over the rest of the body. You don't want to introduce any extra turbulence or any extra drag through that. Yep. Okay. And who do you think, they're on the bike right now, who do you think are the most aerodynamic pros out there? Well, I know firsthand I've worked with Cody Beals <laughs> and we've done countless aerodynamic tests. So we've done our virtual wind tunnel testing with him. He's been to the wind tunnel several times. Mm -hmm. Lauren Brandon, someone else we've worked with, and she's usually right up at the front. Um, well, after the swim, she's definitely at the mm -hmm. front. Uh, and then even off the bike, um, she and Lucy two years ago were just basically going back and forth for most of the, the bike until uh, Daniela caught them. So Lauren's quite aerodynamic. Um, someone like Leslie Smith, uh, Jocelyn McCauley who uses the morph yes. bars. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Yes. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone says it's so hard to get aerodynamic tested but it's actually not nowadays is it and you've got a particular service a virtual wind tunnel so can you tell us a bit about that yeah so the virtual wind tunnel um, it's one of a couple different things that are offered right now so we've got uh, our own service which is based around 3d scanning of athletes and we do a computational fluid dynamics analysis we can optimize the position move it back and forth to find out what's what's best for a given athlete the other thing too is some of these on-road tests. So you get the Aeropod or the Nodeo Connect, yep. uh, things like that. And it actually ties together really nicely where you have this on-road component as well as a virtual components. So you can yep. do optimization in computer space where it's cheap and efficient and then you can confirm everything on the road with the experimental testing. You're gonna have to unpack that for me because I don't know what that is. What's, the, what's an Aeropod? Uh, so it basically just measures how quickly you're going in the air, how much um, air you're pushing out of the way. Okay. And then you measure your power at the same time, so you figure out, okay, this is your wind speed, this is your power. Yeah. And you do uh, a physics calculation, just a balance of forces to figure out how much power am I putting in and how much is the air slowing me down. Right. So when you back that out, you know, what's my drag coefficient? Right. You're probably going to have to unpack that again for me, <laughs> actually. But, but are you I actually <laughs> saying now, if uh, you'd had some of that at access to aerodynamics. Exactly, same question Ironman for him. Brazil would have been? I would have been way faster. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry we weren't there for you. I know. <laughs> this is what all this new technology all week that we've been hearing from people. And I'm like, can't we just rewind this like 10 or 15 years to, you know. To you could make a comeback. I could, but I never will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Andrew, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And don't forget that we are having our contest right now where you can win a 4i dual-sided power meter by tagging three of your friends in the comments below and telling them how awesome we are and they should watch our show. We should go and watch the race. Oh yeah, we totally got to watch the race. So come back tomorrow and you'll see our race wrap up.